Does the menstrual cycle really affect athletic performance? Most people would say yes, but the truth is there's a real lack of scientific evidence backing that up. But that is starting to change thanks to researchers like Toby Mundell and two recent papers in the Journal of Physiology. The menstrual cycle has an impact on athletic performance in different ways. So for example, it can affect injury prevalence. Um, rise in estrogen might cause injury, but it's also protective for muscle damage. Also, you get a difference um, in the rise of estrogen and progesterone that dictates fuel metabolism, so whether you use fat or carbohydrate. And that's just the start of it. So it's pretty reasonable to think that all this might affect sports performance. But we still don't have a clear picture. Why is the research so lacking? One reason is because it's taboo. Um, in particular, researchers don't necessarily want to address this, but also because it remains a difficult area to control for. Often when um, using female participants, you have to double the amount of visits so that you can cover the menstrual cycle. Whether it's societal prejudices or just limited resources, this lack of scientific evidence is a concern. But now new, rigorous research is starting to clear things up. One important factor the menstrual cycle might affect is thermoregulation. That's how the body manages its temperature. It's vital to athletic performance and it's what Toby is really interested in. Female body temperature does vary during the menstrual cycle. So typically after ovulation in the luteal phase, core body temperature rises by about half a degree. You also get a delay in sweating and blood flow to the skin things the body does to cool down. Therefore, in theory, there could be a disadvantage when performing exercise where thermoregulation is important, in particular during exercise and heat stress. So they set up some experiments to see if that theory holds true. First, they looked at female cyclists working in dry and humid heat at different times of their cycle. They found three things. First, despite slight body temperature differences, for these trained athletes, their actual heat response, things like sweating, didn't change. Secondly, their performance wasn't significantly altered by the menstrual phase, but they were much slower in the humid heat than dry. And finally, if the athletes could self-pace, they regulated their body temperature just as well as at other times of the cycle that debunks the myth that women shouldn't compete in hot climates during the latter phase of their menstrual cycle for fear of heat illness or a severe drop in performance. But this all raises an important question. Over half of top female athletes take the oral contraceptive pill. How does that affect things? Some people say this effectively stops hormonal fluctuations, which might remove any temperature effects altogether. So Toby and his team repeated the study, factoring this in. What did they find? That female athletes who were taking an oral contraceptive pill still show a small endogenous rhythm of their menstrual cycle, despite taking that oral contraceptive pill. Basically, the pill doesn't stop the body's natural temperature cycles. But that doesn't actually play a large part in their exercise performance. What's more important is whether the heat stress they encounter is either humid or dry. Whether you look at this in naturally menstruating women at different times of the cycle or compare them to contraceptive pill users, this temperature rise doesn't have any overall effect on performance. What does is the environment the athletes are in. And when you look at the big athletics tournaments coming up, this is important. We've got the 2019 World Athletics Championships in Doha, we've got the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Athletes are going to be facing different types of heat stress, dry heat versus humid heat. And what our findings show are that for a female athlete, it doesn't matter what stage of their menstrual cycle they're at or whether or not they're taking oral contraceptive pills. It is the environments that are going to dictate their performance. And for anyone doing the much needed research into this, they just might need to reconsider their assumptions about what impact the contraceptive pill might be having. There's a long way to go with this research. It's a marathon and the finish line isn't even in sight yet, but things are definitely moving in the right direction.